Hi guys, I'm so happy you're here with me today. Um, I posted a few, several weeks ago, uh, I can't remember what it was, a question or something on Instagram, and people expressed their desires that they would love to learn about how do we get Milo to and Liam to eat healthily, to love salads, vegetables, fruits, um, and what was our process from um, introducing uh, solids to today. So it'll be a very um, a video where we just share our experience. Disclaimer, uh, especially if we're talking about introducing solids to your baby, this is just my experience. It's not a professional advice. Please get advice from your doctor uh, before you, you start anything. This is just me sharing my story. And another disclaimer, I'm just talking about average kids. Uh, I know there are sorts of all sorts of kids, picky eaters. I know that there are all sorts of kids, uh, that children are different. And there's quite a few of uh, your kids maybe that are picky eaters. So I'm just talking about average children um, and what we did. Because our kids were very much average in this sense and what we did and what we saw it helped and I'll probably have a few advices for you guys with picky eaters as well towards the end. So stay until the end, don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe and why not after you finish watching the video leave me a comment down below and tell me about your experience or maybe um, tell me what other subjects you would like me to talk about. Both of our kids were breastfed up to when they were one years old that's when I decided to, to stop and uh, it was just our choice, our decision. So they were exclusively breastfed up to one years, uh, when they would turn one year. More or less, it might have been a few days before or after, but you get the idea. And we started introducing solids when they were six months old. We followed the directions of our uh, GP or of our family doctor. She's a really nice lady and although in Romania even with doctors they have a lot of these beliefs, old wives tales that they believe and they promote. Our family doctor, she's really nice, we kind of just fit together, same kind of view in the sense of raising kids. So we followed her advice. We started six months old, we started with vegetables, legumes if I'm not wrong, that's how you call them, basically parsnip, carrot, potato and we, an onion I think, not the first time I think, I can't remember exactly, but basically I'm sure there were parsnips, carrots and potatoes and uh, I just boiled them with a bit of parsley in it, but I removed the parsley at the end with water of course and um, at the end I blended them in a more soupy soup. <laughs> Basically, not a cream, a cream soup that, that is a bit more soupy rather than thick. As being the first meal, then getting used to the texture, uh, preventing any choking, and um, they loved it from the start. Of course, at first they had made all sorts of funny faces, but with babies, just because they make funny faces doesn't mean they dislike something. It was just that it was new, new texture, new taste, so it's, a, it's normal that they make all these funny faces that you see babies make when they start eating solids. But basically we started with vegetables. This legumes, especially the basics ones, we introduced them all at once with the advice of our, our doctor, I repeat again. So you do whatever your doctor tells you to do. Uh, and after we introduce a few more vegetables, I introduce egg, but it was portioned, it wasn't all at once, it was making sure that there's no reactions, it was trying to buy organic, and also chicken, chicken breast especially, in the same idea, a blended soup. Only after that, which was probably about seven months and a half-ish, we started introducing fruits. We introduced fruits one at a time, of course, like the recommendations, we left a few days in between just to make sure that there's no reaction, and in case there was a reaction, to know what it came from. And we introduced fruits with cheese, like just simple cow's cheese. Obviously introducing more and more things as time progressed. We had no issues with our kids. They loved, they were ready to start solids when they were six. 
month old. Uh, I know that not all kids are ready six months old, but ours were perfectly fine. They were ready, they left it, and we avoided sugar, salt, honey in their meals until they were turned one. I'm not sure if with honey is up to one or up to two years old, but we followed the directions and the guidelines given by the doctor. And um, on their first birthday, they received their first sweet, although it was a healthier version, but still um, they received their first sugar. And I remember Milo, we have videos for both of them, but I vividly remember Milo enjoying, I just made a cupcake, uh, a carrot cake cupcake with cream cheese frosting. And he just like, I put it in front of him, we sang happy birthday, and then we just let him see what he does. And he just mushed it and put it in his mouth and you could hear like, mmm, like enjoying, realizing that it's something nice. From then on, we started introducing them more to the food that we were eating. And also, before my lieutenant one, we were in Spain and my sister-in-law gave me a book. A book about cooking for toddlers, which was giving, was giving uh, small quantities, great recipes, healthy recipes, but not like um, overly healthy, but more towards, towards the meals that adults would eat, but in a healthier way. Maybe not so much sugar, uh, not so much salt, not so much uh, condiments, although... I did introduce some of the condiments as recommended, like cinnamon, I remember I used to put a bit in their fruit uh, or in their porridge, because I started making porridge for them as they were growing, or other condiments like that, just to get them used to something new. So yeah, since they were born, basically, and not just when it comes to kids, but especially when it comes to kids, Sam and I always kind of talked and we said, okay, where do we want to go? What do we want to achieve? We didn't just let things run naturally because naturally you get nowhere. We wanted to have a clear direction of where we want to be. So we did the same when it came to uh, kids eating habits and food and yeah, everything that had to do with this. So we kind of have this vision for them and for us as well, that they will grow as balanced kids and balanced adults. We wanted them to be able to eat healthily while they still enjoy some naughty things such as a chocolate, a cake, an ice cream, a McDonald's from time to time, uh, who knows what that everything is put under bed these days, which yeah, it doesn't give many nutritional values, but it gives you a moment of pleasure and it's okay from time to time. Basically our vision us as adults and for our kids, and I actually told our kids the other day, because we were talking about this, I said, look, if 80% of the time we eat healthily, or we give our best to eat as healthy as possible, we can take the other 20% and enjoy, as I said, an ice cream, a cake, a chocolate, a pack of crisps, um, a fast food, like McDonald's or a takeout or whatever. We can enjoy that guilt-free. Because we know we are being responsible. So that's what we wanted for our kids. And we want for our kids. And that's what we try to model through our lives. And that's basically our lifestyle as a family. I didn't, and we didn't want to uh, shield them too much from, like, there are all sorts of parents. And I'm not saying it's bad. What they do is just their choice. And that's fine. But I know there are parents that kind of shield their kids from anything that contains sugar up to when they are three years old or four we didn't want that. We wanted them to grow balanced, enjoy the sugar from time to time, but in a way that their diet is not based on the bad things or the unhealthy things. So we didn't necessarily show them. They were allowed a biscuit from time to time, a chocolate from time to time, an ice cream from time to time, a piece of cake, even if it was made with, uh, with our food and other bad things. What we did was, as I said, from one year we started kind of slowly introducing them to the food that we were eating. And what we did was we decided it just worked best for us as a family, as a, as a unit, as a lifestyle, as a program and everything. We decided that their afternoon snack, which would be around 4 or 5 o'clock, they would have a meal made out of fruits and vegetables. So what we did... We take a quarter, we, we used to take, I'm just giving some example, a quarter of an apple, a quarter of a banana, a quarter of a cucumber, 
and a quarter of a radish, let's say. We used to chop them very, very small pieces so they would not be a choking hazard. And we used to feed them with a teaspoon. That would be their meal. They just took it. It was just uh, babies and children so small, they, uh, their tastes are not developed as much as an adult is. And actually, even see now on my kids, as time progresses, they are more and more developed in their tastes. They understand better uh, food and, you know, all these concepts. They used to be fine with it. Um, I remember when we used to go to church especially, all the other kids were with their salty crackers, salty sticks, salty biscuits or sweet biscuits. And our kids, the Wilson family, came with their food container, with their chopped vegetables and fruits in a small pieces and feeding their children with a teaspoon uh, when they were small and then as they grew they fed themselves. We were seen, I know that for sure, we were seen as being weird, awkward, strict, very strict. But the idea was that our kids knew that the moment they finished that snack, especially as they grew, they still had their biscuits in the backpack. They had their salty crackers. And uh, it was just a way of, they knew that they just have to finish that. It's important that they eat their fruits and veg, and then they can enjoy the rest of the not so healthy stuff. And basically, we just progressed from there. As they grew, we we, used, we started cutting bigger pieces and then just giving to them and they would just feed themselves because they were obviously older. Uh, a funny memory and an incident is uh, three years ago, Liam was three and a half. We were in Spain. It was a family reunion. And Liam went to the fridge. Obviously, being small, he couldn't reach the top shelf, but he could see what was there. And he was trying to get it. And my sister-in-law was like trying to help him get what he wanted. So she was asking him, would you like some yogurt? She was just looking to see what things that a child would probably ask for. Would you like a, a cheese string? Uh, and he was like, no. Would you like a chocolate pudding? Because they were like chocolate pudding. He's like, no. And then she sees this ob object, this thing. And she's like, do you want the pepper? And he was like, yes. So she hands him the pepper. Liam takes the pepper happily waddling around, going and munching from a, a big piece of pepper. And it was just funny, and I know a lot of people were like, your kids choose that, but it was just like, a, it kind of, they got accustomed to that taste, I think. Although they still enjoyed the non-healthy stuff, that's what their body was craving, because that's what they were feeding their body most of the time, 80% of the time. And there is the saying, what you feed grows, what you starve dies. If you are a sugar junkie, if you were a sugar junkie and maybe you tried to cut out sugar completely out of your diet, you would crave it, crave it. But the more you would say no, no, no and start eating healthily, the less you would crave. The less that um, desire would go into starvation and then you would start enjoying the healthy stuff. What you feed grows, whether it's your desires for fruits or sugary stuff, what you starve dies. So I think that's the same thing with our kids. Our kids love salads. I mean, if especially Milo, he Liam loves salad. He, Liam, Milo loves salads. Liam loves vegetables and fruits more independently. Like many times for breakfast, we have like the really nice chocolatey cereals that are a treat, and they don't come every day or every week. And many times you'll see him just getting some cherry tomatoes or. Uh, an apple and he's just enjoying that so he's that type of a kid Milo enjoys salads I mean that boy could live on salad just like me I love salads as well if we are to go out and eat at the mall for example and there would be a KFC because that's what we have in our mall and a pizza place and a Chinese place he would always choose the salad because we also have like something that is called salad box and it's just basically different salads that you can choose from. And they are really nice and yummy. Maybe not the healthiest because you buy them from there. They are not homemade, the sauces and everything. But still, it's a better choice than other things. But he would always choose that. He would choose that every time if he would have the, the option. So yeah, they're just different. But they both enjoy vegetables and fruits. Mm, that's our family. That's how we are. Our kids, to this day, because they have started saying that, they are allowed a sweet a day. doesn't mean a small sweet. 
it means maybe a, a small bar of chocolate, like a Kit Kat bar, or an ice cream, or some biscuits, or Oreo biscuits, and a small pack of jellies, depending with what we have in the house. We work with what we have, we work with the season that we're in. But they are allowed once a day to have a portion of something sweet. But the rule is next. It always happens in the afternoon. And if they want to have their sweet, they first have to have four fruits and all vegetables, whichever they want. So four in total, not four fruits and four vegetables, four in total of their choice. And they are very good with this. Many times by the time lunch comes around, they kind of finish their four fruits and veg. Salad or any vegetables that we have for lunch this is not included into those four. For sure, like this, we know for sure every day they have their five a day in a very healthy way. And then they just go and enjoy their sweets. Also, we as a family, we have a sweets box. Just because where we are, it's, we don't have the space of a sweets cupboard. And that sweets box, I mean, probably not when they were one year old, but from like probably three upwards, we keep it in their view. It's basically here. I'm saying here because that's my where my laptop is, where it, which is on a coffee table. And we have like a plank of wood under the coffee table and it stays there, the, the box of sweets. And our kids are never tempted by it. They don't think about it. They know when they're allowed to have their sweets, they go and they come and ask, look, if I take this and this and this, can I have this? And I say yes or no. Sometimes they, in their imagination, they would eat three chocolate bars, but that's not okay. And uh, that's fine, they understand. But it always stays here. And we wanted to create this, um, this atmosphere of respect in our house. And... They, they would never dare to go and take. It's just not in our culture as a family. Yeah, that's the culture of our family. And sometimes, yeah, I might enjoy an ice cream in front of them and they, they didn't finish yet their fruits and veg and they're fine. They're happy for me, but they're not like lingering, oh, I'm sitting on chocolate or who knows what and I'm not allowed. No, we just respect each other. I don't eat it every day, whereas they are allowed every day and sweet. And it's just the culture we wanted to create in our family, and they are fine, they are balanced, um, and yeah, we, we are happy, we are really, really happy that we manage this. We manage to raise them, at least for the moment, they are balanced children. They are children who eat healthily, but who would also enjoy McDonald's on their birthdays, we always ask them what well, what they want to eat for lunch and we choose to go out wherever they choose to go and of course 99 for 99 percent 9, of the time it's mcdonald's because they love they i like the idea of um, the toy that they receive in a happy meal the fact that they're allowed coca-cola yes they're allowed coke from time to time it's not every day it's a treat but they are allowed a cup yeah, not a bottle, but a cup or a can sometimes, depending where we are, especially when we're in holidays. But the idea is of balance. You can still enjoy the Coca-Cola once a month, I'm saying now for children, if they drink water the rest of the time. It's just that idea of being balanced, not being into, not being a health freak, because we just didn't want that, but not being a, a junky food obsessed, just being balanced. If 80% of the time healthily and then you can enjoy the 20% of treats or junk or whatever. So yeah, that's really our story. Uh, we are really blessed with, with our kids. And now I just want to say, no matter what principles you're trying to apply, no matter how well you start uh, introducing solids or how bad you start introducing solids, what stays and what speaks the loudest is your example. If you as a parent always eat junk food, don't expect your child to go for the salad or for the uh, fruit. If you always grab a chocolate, don't expect him to go and grab the fruit. Surround your kids, surround yourselves with healthy stuff. I mean, we spend the majority of our food budget on fruits and vegetables. We, just as a, individuals, we're not very meat meaty eaters, just because how we are. But if you are, it's fine. The idea is... Um, make it available 
and action speaks louder than words. So you are your child's greatest example. Uh, they are going to become slowly until they get their own independence and then they develop their own personality and so on. But they, they, they will become, in many ways, a mini you. So think about it. Think about who's watching when you when you choose to, to do something, when you go shopping for your food. Think about it. Do it responsibly. Yeah, that's our story. That's where we are. We are blessed. We eat healthily. And now I want to say for you picky parents with picky eaters, uh, there's hope for you guys as well. I asked Sam for permission to share a bit of his story in this aspect and he gave me the permission basically up to two years old he developed properly just normally like any child he was actually very chubby uh, in France where he was born and he was a bit towards the obesity uh, levels but also at that age is like when your child is mainly feed, fed milk and it's not necessarily a problem to start you know worrying about so that around the age of two, he went really down. Um, he started being very fussy about food. He ate very little and he started not breathing very well. Basically what happened and he figured it out was that his tonsils were very, very inflammated. So bad that he needed to have them removed around the age of two. He had them removed and after that we don't really know why nor I think that his parents or family know why but he started being really picky just thinking logically probably because some certain foods just hurt him you know if they're inf inflammated maybe some fruits would cause pain you know just think about it if you have a cut and you have a bit of lemon juice on it how much it hurts so maybe because of that, we don't really know the explanation, but basically from two years old up to probably about 16, 17-ish, he ate a very restrictive diet, although his family was eating normally. Although maybe he had the example of a good and balanced uh, diet, he would eat only chips, toast with um, butter and marmites, now, if you're from England, you already know what Marmite is. If you're not, it's just basically a paste made out of yeast extract. Extract. It has some vitamin B in it. Uh, we love it as a family. We always try to get it. So when somebody goes to England, we're like, oh, can you bring me a jar of Marmite? Uh, so he would eat that and pasta, I think, but depending with what on it, and cereals. He would eat a lot of cereals with milk but basically very, very restrictive and unhealthy. The good news is that he is 36 now. Sorry, babe, that I told you them your age. I hope it's okay. From eating so restrictive and unhealthy to now eating and enjoying salads and vegetables and fruit. So he went from a very... Um, quite towards an extreme of eating very restrictive and unhealthily to now going and being a, a, a balanced adult. My thing is that no matter your story or your um, particular or how different your family and your children are from my children from my children who probably might like you would never dream of your child being able to even accept a fruit or a vegetable have patience, have hope, there's hope for you guys, there's hope for your children, and just because, I mean, the idea is every parent wants to give the best, but just because of some issues in their life, you know, just life's sometimes hit you with stuff, they are in a bad place now, and maybe they eat very unhealthily, patience, and look in distance, it doesn't happen overnight, uh, Sam didn't get from eating just chips and cereals and bread basically to eating salads almost every day overnight no it was a process uh, when I met him he was 20 something he was eating okay he wasn't obviously I don't think he would ever have chosen a salad or lunch or dinner but then we got married and because I love salads I mean I could live just on salads I know it doesn't seem on me but that's just because of some other health issues but I love salads and as 
obviously I was just enjoying them and having them. Uh, he started wanting them. He tasted for me. He saw that they were nice. And then he would just kind of uh, want more to now him being the one that looks for like healthy recipes. For example, we have a spinach and oats um, waffle recipe. We have a carrot um, a recipe for pancakes and he makes them. They're super healthy, super yummy. And yeah, the kids enjoy that waffle of spinach with oats with chocolate. But think about all the benefits that are inside the waffle, even though they spread some chocolate on top. So he changed very much. So basically there's hope for you. There's hope for your children. Don't go into this period that your kids are not like my kids. Every journey and every family and every child is different. I just shared from our experience. Maybe some of this advice will help you. Um, and I hope it will help you. I hope it will encourage you. Uh, yeah, basically that's about it. Another thing, if your children are picky eaters, give them choices. There's not an issue anymore because they're pretty, they are older now. But when they were a bit smaller, three, four or five-ish years old, they would you know, like not want some of the vegetables. So basically the rule was this. Uh, for example, on a roast dinner, I would obviously make the chicken, Yorkshire puddings, because we love a roast dinner. Even if you live in Romania, I cook roast dinners, especially when it gets colder outside, not in the summer. But we do love a roast dinner. It's probably Sam's, one of Sam, Sam's favorite meals. And the kids love it and I love it. So basically we not just cooking the the potatoes, the Yorkshire puddings, chicken, but obviously we love the parsnips, the the carrots, and for example, they wouldn't really have wanted to have carrots or parsnips cooked, they love carrots fresh, but because I wanted them to just get used to it, you know, and be able to eat more diversified, I would tell them you have to choose one, you have parsnips, you have carrots, you have to choose one, whatever you want, and eat it. And that worked really well for us in that stage when they were a bit picky uh, because it gave them a choice, because it gave them a bit of independency and they knew, okay, this is my choice. Okay, I have to eat one, but at least I have this choice which one I will eat. It worked perfectly for us. Maybe it'll be a little trick that you could do with your child slowly, again, with patience. And yeah, really uh, remember... Remember that you are the biggest example and what I always militate for is not removing all sugar because we live in this world, but living a balanced diet, living a balanced life, having a balanced diet, be good administrators with our bodies. Yeah, I'm overweight, I know, I struggle to lose the weight that I accumulated during pregnancy, but I'm being responsible. That's not because I'm being sitting on a couch and eating McDonald's and chips and uh, ice cream and chocolates every day. It's because of some health issues, which another point I'll say for the overweight people, don't judge when you see somebody who's a bit more overweight. You don't know the story behind. That person might be struggling and fighting and working and still things don't shift. I get you. I still continue to fight because I'm just not somebody who gives up. But because of obviously some health issues and the size that I am, and I'm learning how to accept myself, love myself, while I'm still working at getting better, but I'm being responsible. And my focus at the moment is to eat healthily, be responsible with the body that I have, exercise as much as I can with the schedule that I have, and try to sleep well, have a good quality sleep, basically invest in the things that matter in a way because we are all different types, uh, different shapes and sizes but if I'm being responsible and we're taking care of this body that God gave us don't forget the Bible verse that says that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit yeah there are different types of temples they look different but let's be responsible let's raise and try our best to raise balanced children we might give our best and our child might turn into a junkie food eating person but at least know that you gave your best. Or let's put it in a positive way. Maybe your child is so fussy and you don't know how to get him to eat a vegetable or a fruit. Have hope. There's hope for a shift to happen. And for you to end up having a child who's an adult who eats very healthily, just like my husband is. 
this is our story. This is how we started. This is just our story. <laughs> this is just our lifestyle. But I hope you'll be encouraged. And uh, I hope you get something from today's video that might help you. And yeah, be blessed. Don't forget to subscribe and like. And I'll see you next time. Bye.